are the Toronto Maple Leafs planning on making a huge goalie trade to upgrade the position between the pipes going into next season? What will new GM Branch or Living focus on after looking at the Austin Matthews contract as his top priority? We have three goalies we're going to discuss today that have all been linked to the Leafs in different capacities. We'll discuss some potential trade options in that regard. Plus, we have a big update as well in the Ottawa Senators' ownership situation. The Calgary Flames appear set to hire their next head coach and some other UFA and RFA rumblings from around the league. All that coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have a lot of NHL stuff to cover here today. Uh, let's get into first some of the news items before we get into the trade rumors regarding the Leafs and some goalie options that they're reportedly looking at. Uh, first up, the latest news on the Ottawa Senators ownership situation, which has just been updated here again in the past hour by Bruce Giriak of the Ottawa Sun indicating that it's looking more and more like Michael Anlauer is going to become the next owner of the Ottawa Senators. Now, of course, this is not finalized as of yet, so it's hard to say with absolute certainty, but it's believed that he's kind of in the pole position to take over and that he might have entered uh, in the, the preferred bidder status to kind of start the process to closing the sale here. So Gary Ock's report tonight indicates that it's looking like uh, the Senators uh, Board of Directors and the banking representatives are entering the uh, the final bidding stage, the preferred bidding stage with one of the candidates, and it's believed to be Ann Lauer. Now, the, the initial bid of Ann Lauer was believed to be somewhere around $850 million. Uh, the Kimmel Group, I think, was somewhere around that same range as well. It's believed that the bid is right now upwards of an increase to somewhere around the 950 mark. I guess we'll find out once details are ready and able to be released. I mean, I mean... The uh, details have been pretty uh, much kept here in the vault, and we haven't really heard a whole lot of confirmed info here as of yet. Uh, so we'll see. Of course, Michael Anlauer right now holds a 10% stake in the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, that certainly wouldn't be an issue for him to sell. He also sits on the NHL Board of Directors as an alternate governor for the Habs. So he's obviously very well known uh, amongst NHL executives and ownership so obviously getting this approved by the nhl would be a slam dunk uh, he's a toronto-based billionaire uh who's looking to do this he's uh, somebody who is very passionate hockey uh you know executive and, and lover of the sport uh was known as a beer league goalie apparently as well uh but he's also the probably the, all the ownership groups probably the one that's most likely to make the most changes amongst the uh the, the management and coaching part of the senators of the the off ice uh people that would run the franchise so we know that michael landlauer also owns the ohl's hamilton bulldogs he's been a very successful owner there for quite some time uh he's worked with a lot of people that he uh, knows and respects and uh, it's quite likely that he want to bring in his own people so i think of all the groups that have been involved here this one is probably the worst case scenario uh, for Pierre Dorian and DJ Smith to kind of maintain their jobs with the Senators. Doesn't mean for sure he's going to come in and clean house immediately. That may not necessarily happen. Of course, we don't know that, but it's just that's still what the latest intel says that, that Ann Lauer, which has kind of been not really new intel. We've kind of known for some time that he would be very likely to uh, to want to do that. Now, of course, one uh, candidate that seems to be out in mind for GM is uh, Steve Steos. Now, Steve Steos was his GM in Hamilton for a long stretch. He's working for the Edmonton Oilers right now. It looks like they were kind of increasing his role. Not a given he's going to want to leave the Oilers, but it's believed that, that Ann Lauer will try to pull him to Ottawa to work for the Senators should he become the new owner. Um, when it comes to coaching candidates, I've heard names like Claude Julian as being a potential candidate. Uh, we've also heard of maybe Patrick Waugh. Patrick Waugh actually has a, I believe there was an article, I think it was NHL.com, uh, where he's kind of put it out there that he understands that his past actions when he was head coach of the Colorado Avalanche and how things went down and how he left has kind of like kind of burned some bridges, so to speak, and has kind of helped a lot of teams shy away from bringing him back to the NHL. And to be honest, I think he's changed a lot. I think he's calmed down. I think he's learned a lot. Um, and I would be very open to seeing an NHL team give him a chance. After watching him, I uh, coached the Quebec Ramparts and what they were able to do, especially this past year. He just seems to be a completely different coach at this point. I think he's a lot more mature. Uh, and he kind of seems to have toned down the hot-headedness. And I, I think he deserves another shot, to be honest. He's a, he's a bright, bright hockey man around the game his whole life and has a lot to offer. So I, I hope whether it's Ottawa or somewhere else that he does get a chance to coach again because I, I think he's earned that uh, chance for a second chance, if you will. 
But uh, anyways, uh, whether it's Waugh, Julian, or one of the other people that Ann Lauer would like, it's, you know, like I said, let's believe that they'll come in and make some uh, sweeping changes. If not right away, then maybe in the near future. I mean, depending on when this sale closes and when Ann Lauer would have the power to start doing those things, um, you know, they may not have a choice but to let the current uh, guys and leave them in place for either one season or part of a season, depending on how things go. I mean, it's going to take 60 to 90 days for a sale to close. We're probably going to be getting awfully close to the beginning of next season before they're officially, um, you know, have the, the key, so to speak, and be, the you know, the, uh, the new owner. So we'll have to see where everything goes here. But I think we're finally getting to a point where we're, we're ready to, to move to the final stages. Of course, barring any unforeseen actions taking place during the closing process. But... We'll see. That's the latest update there. Of course, the Calgary Flames appear set to hire their next head coach as well. Looks like Craig Conroy, of course, another uh, you know longtime Flame was there, is going to be given this uh, new job to somebody else who's been a longtime Flame and uh, get ready for that promotion. And that's a uh, longtime assistant coach Ryan Huska. He appears to be uh, who the Flames are going to give the nod to here for the next head coach announcement. Likely is going to come on Monday. We'll have to see for sure where this goes down, but. Uh, Elliot Freeman reported this, and a number of other insiders have also confirmed they've heard the same things as well. Uh, so, of course, uh, Huska will go into the head coaching role. I do honestly wonder what this means for a guy like Lynch Love, who's the two-time coach of the year for the Wranglers in the American Hockey League. Um, obviously, he could very well continue coaching there, stay in the organization. Maybe they offer him to come up as an assistant coach in Calgary. I don't know. Um, but I think he's probably at a point where he feels that there's not much left for him to accomplish in the AHL. And I wonder if they were to be at risk to lose him to another organization. But if they don't feel he's the guy after what he's done, they want to go with Haska, who's got more recent NHL experience as an assistant instead, then uh, it's hard to say if and when they see him as being an NHL head coach with their organization at least. So we'll have to see where that goes. A few other news and notes from around the league. Rasmus Dahlin and the Buffalo Sabres are eligible to uh, do a contract extension on July 1st. There's reports that they've already kind of engaged in some conversations. Well, they can't make anything official until the time comes on July 1. Uh, it's believed that they're talking about a mega contract extension, an eight-year uh, deal somewhere in that 9 to 10 million, probably close to 10 million bucks per year. We know Darlene had a big season last year. Um, obviously, big improvement. He's come a long way in the last few years. That's a lot of money, but you know, a lot of people feel he's certainly well worth it. It's a big commitment for him to give to the Sabres as well, which is what you want to see from their young players. Uh, committing to being a part of the solution there on a long-term basis. Um, so we'll see if that comes to be on July 1 or if those numbers come in, what they're saying. But let me know what your thoughts are on the Rasmus Dahlin maybe getting somewhere near that $10 million mark. That's a, that's a lot of cash, but he is a special talent. So we'll see if he can earn that new contract. Uh, another defenseman to watch is Ryan Graves in New Jersey. We've seen the Devils complete a sign-and-trade, of course, with the uh, Jackets with uh, Damon Severson being moved on an eight-year contract extension. Uh, Ryan Severs or Ryan Severson, yes, Ryan Graves, <laughs> combining the two guys here together, uh, is also a pending UFA in the same boat. Now, the Devils like Graves, and I, I kind of wonder if they might try uh, to get a deal done, but at the same time, uh, they have enough defensemen there uh, with some younger guys that they're going to want to give more opportunity to that I'm not really sold on the idea that Graves ends up staying either. There's been apparently a lot of interest from other teams, kind of wondering if he's going to be on the move and are interested in trading for his rights uh, ahead of July 1, like they were with Severson. Now, it may or may not work out to be a sign and trade. It could be, I guess, if a team was willing to give Graves an eight-year deal. If that's not the case, then there's no advantage to him signing uh, with the Devils and being traded. They very well could just trade his rights, um, you know, for, you know, fourth, fifth round pick, something like that, and then get a, get a deal worked out with the next team. But he's going to be one of the defensemen, I think, that gets a decent amount of attention. The, the decor on the UFA um, the status this year is not the greatest. And when you see you know guys like Severson are already off the market, it really depletes what's out there. So I think Graves would be a great addition on a number of clubs. Uh, I think he's uh, fully capable of being a second-pair guy. Uh, I think he's come a long way here in the past few years. Of course, the Avalanche had to move him because of cap purposes. Uh, obviously, he finished out his contract here in New Jersey. Been a good addition there as well. And kind of an underrated guy. I think he's a pretty solid D-man, and we'll see where things go. But we very well could see a similar scenario play out like Steverson, where a trade could materialize for his rights, maybe even with a contract, in the next little while before we get to 
the draft and free agency. Of course, another candidate to watch here for potential bio. This, of course, would happen after the Stanley Cup is awarded. Uh, 48 hours afterwards, we'll see the first bio window open. And even though this player has been mentioned in uh, trade rumors, which I do think the first option is going to be a trade, but look for a former Jets captain, Blake Wheeler, to be a potential bio candidate. Uh, obviously, with his cap hit being as high as it is, the Jets would have to retain a decent amount of money to make that cap hit feasible for another team. Now, what would be the preferred way to go? I think they'll try uh, to retain anywhere around that two, two and a half million dollar mark. He's making 8.25. They can knock that down somewhere around the six range. Um, then that's going to be more feasible for another team to work into their cap situation. I, I don't think they're going to want to retain a whole lot more than that. I don't see any scenario where they retain 50 or even a 40% because a buyout would actually work out to be cheaper, at least for first year. Uh, they could save uh, over five million bucks in the next season on the cap hit. I think this buyout is a cap hit through the buyout would end up being around 2.2, 2.3 million next year. But then they'd have an extra year tacked on the same thing. So they probably don't really want dead money when the cap's going to rise more in, the, in two years from now if they can help it. But if it creates enough space for next year, then we'll see. Because the other thing, of course, is we don't know what else is going to be going on in Winnipeg. Uh, we're looking at potential trades for Hellbach, Dubois, Shifley, um, and depending on what comes back, like they may end up with a decent amount of cap space. They might be more inclined just to retain a bit and move them than do a bio. But if, if, depending on how things are looking, I'm sure there's going to be tons of conversations taking place between now and then, and we'll have to see where it goes. But uh, I wouldn't be shocked if when the bio window opens, if his name is mentioned in there, uh, that they just consider that if they can't find a trade. It's just because that cap it so high, it's, it's not going to be easy, more complicated than some of their other guys as well, especially considering he's a little bit older um, and production hasn't been quite as good as a guy like Shifley more recently as well. So they'll have a harder time getting a taker for sure. Now, as I mentioned, could the Toronto Maple Leafs swing a blockbuster trade or at least a, a significant trade in terms of a goaltender? Now, we know the goalie market is expected to be very, very active this offseason. All kinds of goaltenders have been mentioned in potential trades. Lots of rumors floating around. There's a, obviously a good crop on the UFA side of things as well. There's some RFA goalies that may not be qualified, like a Mackenzie Blackwood, for example. So they would become the UFAs as well. And there's all kinds of goalies of various ages in the rumor mill that could be available for trade. Now, the surprising thing here is I think it's probably fair to say, I don't know how a lot of you thought, but I know for me, at the end of the season, or in, in the playoffs, when the Leafs season was done, after Toronto lost to the Florida Panthers, based on how everything went, I said, okay, you've seen the emergence of Joseph Wall. Okay, he came in, and he obviously, you know, it was not a scenario like he took the team on a major run or anything, but he played well, and he played well in some high-pressure games. So to be honest, I think Joseph Wall is ready for an NHL opportunity. Now, is he ready to be a starter? I wouldn't go that far with it, not yet at this point. You want to ease this kid in. You don't want to put too much on him too quickly. Could he be a 1A, 1B, or should it be more of a, a tandem where another guy kind of does the, the starting and he's more of a backup? And I think that's probably the way he should go for at least a year. Let him earn more and more starts and eventually can work into be a 1A, 1B where they may play closer to 50-50. Of course, but I think Sam Sonoff, though, had to obviously leave with injury at the end of his tenure. Like when the, the way things left for him at the season... And in the playoffs was injury. Like uh, Sam Sonoff was was good for the Leafs this year. I think he was a great pickup. Worked out way better than Matt Murray. I think we can all agree on that. Matt Murray will not be a Leaf next year. He still has a year in his contract, but whether it's through buyout or trade, I guarantee the Maple Leafs and Brad Tree Living will find a way to part ways with Murray, and he will not be on the roster next year and not going to be in that conversation anymore. So it leaves you with Sam Sonoff, who was an RFA because he only signed a one-year deal. And then you got Wall, who's under contract, a quite nice cheap contract for that matter, for a couple more seasons just yet. So that's going to help their cap tremendously, the fact that he's been able to come up and play and be a full-time NHLer. But I think most of us would have agreed that Samsonov and Wall, the odds of them returning with them as their goaltending tandem next year wouldn't surprise me one bit. I think Samsonov was a real good fit there, and I would not be surprised in the least if they sign him to an extension I'm not sure how long term they go with him, considering, uh, you know, how he got let go out of Washington, didn't get qualified, and had to sign like a short term, prove it contract in Toronto. And even though I think there's still potential for him to do even better, and with the cap rising next year or two, I wouldn't think he'd want to go too long term. 
I'm thinking of Sam Sonoff, probably looking for a two to three year contract. Something of that nature makes a lot of sense for him and the Leafs both, especially with Wall having a contract for a couple more years. Maybe they match them up so that they're kind of both expiring around the same time. Wall, of course, would still be an RFA. Sam Sonoff would be a UFA at that point. And then they'd have some decisions to make if that's going to be the tandem moving forward or not. So to me, Sam Sonoff earned a raise for sure. Did he earn a huge raise to go up around six, seven, eight million? I don't think we go that far with the joke. Uh, I think that's a little bit rich. So to be honest, I, I don't know that Sammy's going to be demanding a huge contract to the point that the Leafs are going to have to say, whoa, that's too much. We can't do that. We're going to have to walk away and trade your rights. I don't think that's the case, but there's lots of insiders seem to think that the Leafs are anxious about upgrading this position further and are looking at all these other goalies, which I find quite surprising. And you know what? Maybe we'll find out that none of it actually ends up happening. Only time will tell. But Eric Francis of Sportsnet, he's pretty convinced at this point that Danny Vladar of the Flames is going to be a, a Leaf next year, and he thinks he's going to be the starting goaltender for the Leafs job. Now, I don't see a Vladar for Sam Sonoff trade. That doesn't make sense to me. Um, Calgary already has Jacob Markstrom, and they have Dustin Wolf in the mix. Calgary has to trade a goalie for a completely different reason. They're just trying to make room for Wolf, uh, who's more than earned a spot in the NHL. So, obviously, if the Flames and Leafs did hook up on a trade involving goalie Danny Vladar, they're not going to be sending a goalie back the other way. There'd have to be a, a, a subsequent trade with another team with uh, Sammy or somebody going somewhere else. Hard to say where that would be. Now, Vladar is only making $2.2 million for two more years. If they had Vladar and Wall as their tandem, that is going to be an incredibly cheap goalie tandem. Their total goalie expenditures would only be a little over $3 million bucks. That's 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 peanuts. There's that, that would help their cap tremendously in affiliate with the rest of the roster. But is that good enough? I don't know. Would you, if, if, if you were the Leafs, would you go into next season with Vladar and Wall? I, to me, there's not enough experience there. I don't really know if, if Brad True Living is going to do that. He, unless he really, really believes in this goalie, that he's ready to step up and be a starter, that seems like a big risk to me. The idea of Vladar being traded is crazy at all. I think it's very, very likely going to happen. I'm just not sure Toronto is a destination. But let me know what you think. Does that make sense to you, Eric Francis, as much as not the most popular sports net reporter. He has been right about enough things when it comes to the Flames in the past, so I have to give him a little bit of credit here that maybe he's on something. I'm just not sure I'm seeing it. Now, of course, we've seen reports as well about Carter Hart in Philadelphia. Of course, we knew that as soon as the Ivan Provorov trade was happening, word was surfacing about Carter Hart and trade conversations taking place, and he could be next in the Flyers to go. All kinds of teams were mentioned, and even Elliot Friedman, a well-respected NHL insider, probably the most of all of them, really, has been linking him to teams like the Toronto Maple Leafs, saying, watch the Leafs. He still is being told that the Leafs apparently have interest. Now, it doesn't mean it's going to happen, but of course, Carter Hart comes with a contract of one more year, 3.979, and that he's a restricted free agent. The coming season is going to play a big role into what the next contract is. Still, if you think about it, from a Leaf perspective and their cap, that's still not a ton of money for next year. Uh, a tandem of Hart and Wall, to me, could make a lot of sense. Unless they trade a Wall and went with Hart and Sam Sonoff, which, again, I mean, is a more experienced tandem, but I'm not really sure we're going to see that. I think Joseph Wall, long-term here, is a potential goalie of the future for this team. I would be very reluctant to move this guy, considering what he's accomplished and built himself up to be here over the last few years. I think he's more than earned his chance and deserves every opportunity to be the goalie of the future for Toronto. So that doesn't entirely make sense to me. If they're going to trade for Carter Hart, then Sam Sonoff has to go. Again, I'm not really sure that he goes to the Flyers, though. I mean, it's possible, but considering they acquired Cal Peterson, they have Sammy Erson, they have other goalies there. I just, I just don't see the Philadelphia Flyers being the landing spot for Sam Sonoff. And not to say they couldn't make a separate deal. So that would have to be what they would do. Uh, I'm not sure where Sam Sonoff would end up. There's lots of teams out there that need goaltending help, though, so it's not like there'd be a shortage of suitors. There definitely wouldn't be too difficult to find, but it would have to be you know, a different type of thing. But the problem is, is if you're not trading Sam Sonoff for these guys, who are you trading? Uh, there's not a lot of youth on this team that you'd really want to consider moving. I think for the right situation, he would consider trading Nick Robertson. I think Matthew Nyes is probably pretty close to being untouchable. 
Um, you know, he's got some younger defensemen that I probably don't really want to move to with Lilgren after recently trading Rask with Sandine. Um, that was a little bit mind boggled by that trade. Uh, they have some other prospects that are kind of interesting, but they don't have the deepest talent pool in the cupboard waiting to come up to the NHL either. So hard to say what that would trade would look like for Philadelphia might have to, cause I'm sure the flyers if they do trade Hart, are going to want a future based package that I think we can all probably agree on for sure. Now, could it center around Nick Robertson? I don't know if the Flyers are going to like him enough for him to be the centerpiece. It's really difficult to say. Now, Nick Kiprios, of course, on a sports center as well, also recently wrote in an article that he writes for the Toronto newspaper. He mentioned Thatcher Demko as being a goalie that could be available for the Leafs to trade. Now, at times last year, Demko's name was in the rumor mill. And I think a lot of people were under the assumption that a Demko trade was highly possible. At this point, I don't think it's nearly as likely though we've seen the, the canucks make a coaching change we've seen them play way better down the stretch under brick Tockett. we've seen them make big improvements we know the ownership there does not want anything to do with a rebuild so if you're not rebuilding you want to win you play better under the, under the new coach and demko was a huge part of that i don't see him being available any longer now i'm the kiprios to me is one of those nhl insiders that's uh i don't know like he sometimes he put some things out there that are Interesting, but just not as likely. I do question his sources compared to some of them, uh, other guys who I think have a lot more reliable intel and are a lot more bang on with them or some of the things that are being you know talked about and going on behind the scenes. So I, I honestly don't think Demko is uh, really likely to be traded by Vancouver to anybody, let alone Toronto this year. And I just don't really see it happen. Now, should they make that trade if he's available on the market? I think it's a serious conversation because I think Demko is an upgrade to a lot of goalies, including Sam Sonov. And I can see the Vancouver Canucks maybe being a team that if they did make that trade, that they could swap Sam Sonov plus something else for Demko. I, I don't think Vancouver does that, but at least they'd be one of the teams that would take him back in a trade. So to me, I, I'm not really sure here. If you take a look at what the formula for winning is, Take a look at the final right now. You've got the Vang the uh, Florida Panthers and the Vegas Golden Knights. You've got Aiden Hill, who was traded for, was it, a fourth-round pick last year? Never really been a long time. It's not like he has a long-time history of being a, a top-10 goalie or starter. you got Bobrovsky, who, who does have the history, but signed a mega contract, seven-year deal, $10 million bucks a season in the first three years or four years or reason. And now he's not been good. He's been inconsistent. It's been a huge problem for this team. Suddenly, he finds his old form and catches lightning in a bottle. I, the goal that thinks it's a uh, position in the NHL, it is so hard to predict. It's going to be the most challenging in a lot of ways. And I just don't know that after watching these playoffs and looking at how some of the early exits for these top goaltenders, as much as you'd love to have one, I'm not convinced at this point that it's really absolutely necessary. I think this year's playoffs have proven that you can have playoff success. You can possibly even win the Stanley Cup with without that you know it's just i don't know i'm not sure that i'd be spending a ton of money here investing in the maple leafs goaltending situation i think they have a pretty good deal with sam Sonoff and wall they both seem to want to be there i don't think sam Sonoff is going to be overly expensive i don't know i know brad truly is going to want to make some changes but at the same time i just don't know what these deals really make the most sense uh you know we're probably not seeing a major trade within the, the core four as we like to say I honestly think he's going to focus more on the blue line and rounding out the rest of the forward group because they have a ton of unrestricted free agents and they have to completely rebuild that bottom six all over again after all the guys that are going to be leaving via free agency. So let me know your thoughts. Do the Maple Leafs make a significant blockbuster trade around goaltending? Are these the guys they're going to target? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. We'll discuss further. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with the latest news, rumors, and analysis of all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.